welcome back. Now you're watching The Breakfast Show with Douglas and myself, Lisa. Um, now... Online fraud, online fraud, <laughs> online fraud, online fraud. Yes, that's the two big words uh, for the show today because we know that what shopping as well as uh, internet banking, these are becoming so much more common these days and with those activities picking up, we know that uh, yeah. fraudsters are finding ways to outsmart us. Not just if you go like, you shop online, I mean even Facebook. Mm. Apparently, they're all, you know, people will start simply go and friend you and uh, see, uh, no, try and try and be friends with you and everything. And they, oh, fraud, online fraud, <laughs> online fraud. <laughs> so, now, to enlighten us more about this topic, uh, we have with us three gentlemen here. Uh, Dato Jalani Johari, who is the Chief Regulatory and Supervisory Officer from the uh, Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, Good morning. MCMC. Thank you. Uh, also, we have Henry Go, co-founder of Macro Kiosk Group of Companies, uh, a multi-country mobile technology enabler, yes. as well as Peter England, uh, the head of retail finances services uh, from the CIMB Bank. Good morning, gentlemen. So, online fraud. Now, um, these days, you know, we know, I know, uh, phishing which is basically, you know... Fishing with a PH. Uh, yes, PH, uh, you know, where they, they kind of um, they, uh, lead you to this website that seems like it's, it's your banking website that, you know, it, it imitates. It's very, it's, uh, it looks like a very legitimate website. Mm -hmm. uh, and also they try and get your personal data. Yeah, but yeah. Like yeah, your yeah. password and your login. So, so, so we've got uh, someone from, uh, from, the, from uh, MCMC here. For those who don't know, that's the uh, Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission. Mm. Um, Dato, I think the yeah. first question, and, and a lot of people want to know this, would be what, what are the things a person uh, should take note, especially when they're doing an online transaction? Okay, thank you, um, Douglas and Lisa. Basically, um, we will advise, you know, only perform transaction over a secure site. So, so if this is the first time, you purchase something from a vendor, mm -hmm. we must do some checking. Uh, some website, they provide uh, the background, for example, like eBay. Uh, there are previous transactions which involve some earlier purchaser. They will provide their own comments. So before anybody transfer into any transaction, please do some research. Mm -hmm. That will be the best advice. And how do you go about doing research though? Because sometimes, you know, the internet is just so full and inundated with information. So we, do, we don't even know sometimes which info is legitimate. So is there like a regulatory body, you know, that we can kind of see, uh, look at it as a source? Um, basically, there's a, quite a long list in the mm -hmm. website itself. Because say for example, for Malaysia in mm -hmm. particular, we have our Malaysian Communication Multimedia Commission. You can always check with us if you're not right. clear. And uh, and there are also other other list of websites which I think currently provide online. Online. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm just uh, moving on from what Dato was saying, um, Henry. Um, do do you is there any kind of uh, you know telltale signs or uh, when it, when we are surfing or even doing transactions that should become like a red flag? You know when we notice uh, just things that we should be aware of or just items that we should see as red flags. Red flags, I think, is very simple. As far as you are not greedy, or, or you should look at it, there's no such thing as free lunch in this world. And I think the key point is that they are using a lot of these things like to trick you and say that uh, this amount of money you have won, or this amount of money that I'll give you. I think these are really the, 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 the first uh, uh, sign showing that there's such uh, activity around. And I think the best is that right now is that you must not only confirming that from just one source. Mm -hmm. If you get a phone call or you see something that's you're not too sure or too good to be true, it's good to just call up your bank or call MCMC for example to just double check you know, if this really is something real. And I think that's, that's what's something that most of people should start doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Henry. Peter, I, 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 you're from uh, CIMB, obviously. Now, re recently something has happened uh, to, to my email account. Uh, I've been getting uh, a lot of messages from banks I don't even have accounts in. Sure. And they tell me that something that something's wrong with my account. Mm. And I thought there must be something really wrong with my account because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, 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 what's happening here and how do, how do people, what if I had an account at, at that bank, like, that would panic me greatly. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, look, I think the issue is, um, you're right, people are getting hundreds and hundreds of emails coming from uh, either their own bank or someone else's bank. Um, and the most important thing is just completely ignore that email, right? 
there's, there's two simple things to remember about online banking. Right? The first one is you, the only way you should ev ever access your online banking is by keying into the URL yourself, oh. www.cimbclicks.com.my, whatever your bank is, right? Mm -hmm. You should never come from an email because the bank would never send you an email saying, please click here to verify your details. Mm -hmm. Okay, so repeat that's, that, repeat that's that. The, the bank thing. will never send you something like that. never send you an email like that. Mm -hmm. No bank will send you that email. Mm -hmm. So you should always go in by either keying that directly or if you save it as a mm -hmm. favourite or whatever on your browser, mm -hmm. that's fine. So you all may, always must enter the, the browser yourself. Okay. The second thing is, and along the way is, um, you will get, typically in these online scams, you will get uh, what we call a TAC, an SMS request saying this is a transaction yes. you're doing, right? The most important thing is you should never get a TAC unless you ask for it. Right? Mm. So if out of the blue you get a TAC on your phone saying, you know, you are sending X thousand ringgit to Russia or something, mm -hmm. right? Don't do anything with it. Mm, just so, ignore it. Yeah, ignore it. Would you say, because I, I had this phishing um, mm. incident happen to me, and what I did was just send the bank an email to say that, you know, this is happening, and uh, sure. uh, in, in a way, do, would you want consumers to kind of report uh, back to look, you? Look, absolutely, because every time someone tells us either via the phone or through an email, we will then go and automatically shut down that site. Oh, okay. um, having said that, we shut it down and another 500 spring up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. So it's, it, it's, it's a never-ending battle, but it is very important that we at least uh, are aware of that side and then we can shut it down immediately and the fraudsters have to go and set up another one. Yeah, that's a, what, what Peter said also is, is no, it's, it seems like a battle that you can't win because you, 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 shut, you shut down one site, another 500 spring up. So what, what steps are MCMC taking to, to, to fight this seemingly impossible battle? Mm. So online fraud is about money, you see. As long there is an effort or attempt to make money, the fraud will continue. Mm -hmm. But on the part of MCMC, we have uh, basically our own network security centers, which we have uh, established uh, to link with the international organizations. Uh, besides that, we work closely with the Bank Negara, our central bank, as well as the police to counter. And um, we also publish our own uh, pamphlets or booklets in mm -hmm. terms of uh, what's tantamount to phishing and whatnot. So there's a lot out there. In fact, we have also made arrangement with the uh, uh, schools uh, to, step, uh, to, to come up with this idea of uh, click dengan bijak. There's a term, mm -hmm. click dengan bijak, you know, whereby everything's at your fingertips. So before you interact, you must uh, employ extra cautious. Mm. Uh, so that is one of the activities that currently being managed by MCMC. Right. Now these scammers are not just targeting uh, people who are transacting online. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, they're trying to exploit your data, personal data. So, uh, Dato, you were mentioning earlier just now in the green room that um, scammers are also hitting on chat rooms. Mm. Um, things seemingly you know, harmless like Facebook. How does it go on? And how does it happen? So I think th this is best advice from us, you know, mm. if possible. Uh, any enterprise or individual, you should install your own firewalls or even technology tools you know, to deter from uh, any of your network or data being hacked by unauthorized person. Right. Uh, so what kind of dangers are we exposed to? I mean, we go to social networking sites like Facebook. Mm -hmm. how, how are they coming on this term? Um, you see, the recent reported case, you know, uh, there's one lady around always, the age always, of 63. Always, yeah. <laughs> So uh, she was dubbed into a part of his, her money, about five millions, to yeah. one American general. All right. Uh, okay. Sold a land bungalow in Bangsa. Yes, I covered yes. the story. Yes, was on the break. yes, we, we did. The story. Yes. So they're hitting, basically, they're coming on and, and masquerading as your friend. Yeah. But in the end, trying to trick you. Yeah. So that's how, okay, all right. Because the targets are, are at random. Mm, okay. Anyone with the emails or handphones, mm. they're likely. Yes. Will be the target for the online fraud. Mm. So with macro kiosk here, I mean, obviously you are not the ones. You you, you are in the you are, you are in the middle. You're not the ones scamming. You're not the ones being scammed. So you're kind of like the delivery uh, person. So how do you identify when something is amiss or not right during an online transaction? Mm. I think uh, there's multiple ways to do it. I think mobile now has come to the point that it plays a very strong uh, authentication factor, or most people would call it as a second factor authentication. You have the username and password as the first factor, and second factor would be your. Uh, SMS or your mobile as the second factor authentication. And I think for Microcast itself, we use many technologies behind to help secure users. And one of the, one of the key things that we, that we did was that first, uh, probably about almost 10 years ago, we worked with Malaysia's largest bank at the time to develop what we call attack. 
and this type has eventually been then used in all banks now mm. in Malaysia. Standard, no? Yeah. Mm. And, but the second part that we are launching probably soon, uh, or now, is that uh, we have the third factor authentication, which is location-based. So, say for example, this guy that usually scams you, they are probably from outside of Malaysia. Mm. So that they are not under the grasp of the Malaysian authorities. But what they do is that they will access your account from there. So in our, in our technology is that we can then detect whether if you are the account holder with your phone is in Malaysia, and the guy trying to access that website through, say, Nigeria, for example, mm -hmm. and we can know that they are coming from two different locations, and this will prompt a red alert to the bank, and the bank say, yeah, stop this, or ask you more questions, or something like that. Right. So uh, we have the technology, and so mobile technology is coming in part where location and stuff like that is even more... Uh, pertinent in terms of helping people to be more secure. Right. Does that, sorry, Veda. So does that mean to tell me you can you can know whether the person is in the country or out of the country? You're right, you're right, you're right. I, I've just noticed there's this uh, particular website, uh, I think on Netscape, or is it um, that they actually can track how many people that are tracking your uh, kind of behavior online, mm -hmm. and they're like 69 <laughs> um, yes, 69 different, different establishments or, I don't know, parties or entities that are tracking you while you are going online, even doing research or just shopping, just tracking your behavior. Normally, no one is interested in my behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. That's right. We never know. And, and in a way, um, how does this kind of uh, <laughs> expose of information, Dato, um, being, do, do you find that there's a regulatory body that should kind of come in and say, there is just so much that we allow organizations or even parties to just track people's uh, you know, uh, pr uh, behavior online to allow us more privacy. You, you see, whenever there's always a requirement, for example, for you to fill up certain information. Mm. So it's for ourselves, you know, to decide as to what kind of information that we want to share with them. Not necessarily to share more than what we are supposed to expect it for. It's about self-regulatory. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be the best principle that I would advise each and every person. Right, okay. Peter, from a mm. consumer's point of view, again, if my mm. identity has been stolen or hijacked and uh, that is used uh, uh, with, with, with a bank, uh, online transaction, and I actually lose money, is mm. the bank held liable f for my loss? Well, look, I think it, it, it really comes down to the circumstances under which this happens. So, for example, in... Uh, an online banking scenario where you enter a phishing site uh, and you key in willingly your ID and password into that phishing site uh, and then most importantly when we send you our transaction authorization code comes onto your phone right it actually specifically says you know you are transferring 3000 ringgit to Russia right? now if you go and then key that transaction authorization code into your computer or give it to someone over the phone then unfortunately you're liable because yeah. you know you've given away every bit of detail to the fraudster possible uh, and it's not like we haven't made every effort to to try to we're telling you what you're doing right but if you're you know careless enough to just key it in or give it away because you think you're going to make money out of this transaction or, or for whatever reason then you will be liable for that transaction now if uh, through other mechanisms, for example, these things were stolen without your knowledge or didn't give your mm -hmm. password to anyone, uh, then it would really come down to the circumstances. But in most cases, you know, the bank systems, th through its ID and password and through its uh, second factor authentication, means that there really is no way that transaction can happen unless you give all of those details to someone. Right. Uh, so even when we go online and probably register ourselves as a, as a user for um, just different shopping online, shopping sites, or even um, different networking sites, no. we're giving a lot of data away. Our mm -hmm. you know, mobile phone sure. um, number, you know, our personal information, mm -hmm. sometimes even our address, our office address. Yeah. So are you kind of alerting us so that we should be careful in yeah. some ways? Uh, no, I mean, I think, again, like when it comes to online banking or online shopping through credit card, for example, um, again, in most cases, to complete a transaction nowadays, for example, at CIMB and many banks, mm. again, there will be some sort of second factor authentication that needs to come to your phone. Mm. Now, of course, if a transaction happens without that second factor authentication, then you are not liable. Right? But if that 
if that comes to your phone, you key it in, then you become liable. It's, it's that simple, right? Right. Okay. I've got a, I've got a <laughs> question for all three gentlemen. <laughs> okay, can you please tell the viewers and even myself included and, and convince us all? Can you win a contest you did not take part in? <laughs> 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 You shouldn't win any contest if you not transact anything. <laughs> Peter? Highly unlikely. <laughs> Henry Kong? Oh, miraculously. Miracle. So miracle. you can't. Your case, yeah. you get an SMS saying you've won a contest, you had no idea you took part in, you didn't win. You didn't win, don't give them anything. Mm. Okay? Yes. I think that's true. Yes. That's true. All right. And finally, uh, here, tips just uh, from um, Peter uh, as well as Henry. Um, Peter first. Uh, just, just some things uh, that you know users can do to uh, kind of you know protect themselves when it comes to online banking now look i think i mentioned the two before which okay. is which is very much when it comes to online banking please you know go to the browser key in the address yourself don't ever go to your internet site through any other means other than through google no way right no, just go google. straight to the top cake key in www.cmbclicks.com.my uh, as I said you can save it as a favourite so you just press on that favourite button that's no problem but don't come, come in through any other mechanism Okay. Uh, All right. and the second one of course is that the tack that I mentioned please read it carefully and if, if you didn't ask for it don't use it don't use it okay and um, I think basically is that like what Peter said is correct I mean end of the day that you must key in yourself firstly and secondly what's, what's appearing on your phone is just for you it's not for anyone else so do not forward it do not read whatever information you need to anyone else so that's the most important thing so what's on your phone is only for you personal stuff yeah. right and also what to update our um, security software from yeah. time to time oh yes that's that's that, that's always that's <laughs> a must right a must. i mean security software is a must for every yeah, yeah and it's not very expensive nowadays i mean you have the online package they can buy off so i think please do that I what think. about mobile phones oh of course mobile phones itself because security um software for mobile phones yeah, I mean, the phones are actually quite secure. I mean, to tell honestly, the whole entire network is a secure network in comparison to the, to the internet. That's why mobile phones become the second factor of authentication because it's actually secure and it's separated from the internet. So on phones itself, yeah, just exercise caution. You don't have to do anything extra. Just don't give whatever you have in your phone to anyone else. That's the key. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. So, so everybody at home, I hope, I hope this clears Thank a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't, 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 just don't give away information willy-nilly. People are trying to steal them, so don't help them out. Yes. Trying to outsmart you, so yeah, yeah. don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. All right. Okay. Thank you, so Thank you much, very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.